Okay, we're going to start off uh, today talking about uh, multiplying a matrix uh, with a vector. So some terminology there. Um, let's suppose that we start off with an M by N matrix A and we're going to let A1, A2 through AN be the columns of A. Okay, so each of these is, is a column vector and not a scalar. Okay, each a sub i is a vector in Rm. Since there are m rows in A, each column would have m entries. And uh, let's let x be a vector in Rn. Then the product of A and x is computed as shown here. Okay, so here's A. And remember, each of these is a vector, okay, a column of A. Here's x. And so to compute a times x, um, basically we just match up um, the components of x with the columns of a. So we end up with x1 times a1 plus x2 times a2 plus out to xn times an. So you'll recognize this as a linear combination of the columns of a. Okay, so here's the deal. ax is a linear combination of the columns of a using the corresponding entries in X as the weight. So here's an example. Here's a matrix A and a vector X. Uh, then to compute A times X, um, we've got the first entry in X times the first column of A, plus the second entry in X times the second column of A, and then plus the third entry in X times the third column of A. And we do the scalar multiplication, add them together, and here's our result. All right, so notice what we have. Here's a matrix times a vector, and we get this vector. Or another way of looking at it, here's a linear combination of uh, the columns of the matrix, um, yielding the same vector, clearly. And then here's another way to look at it. Um, if we um, looked at this augmented matrix, okay, so this is A here, the coefficient uh, matrix A, with um, this vector augmented onto the right-hand side, okay, so um, we essentially have the, uh, the augmented matrix here that corresponds to this system. So if we put it in uh, reduced echelon form, which I have here, notice that we get what we think we should get, right? The solution to the system is just the vector x that we started out with up here. So these are three different ways to look at the same uh, system. So let's uh, formalize that idea. So if we have uh, a matrix A, that's m by n with columns a1, a2 to an, and uh, if, v, if b is a vector in Rm, then these uh, equations, ax equals b, and this linear combination of the columns of a set equal to b, and the system corresponding to this augmented matrix, where you got all the columns of a with b tacked on at the augmented uh, column, all have the same solution set. So these all essentially mean the same thing. They're just different ways of looking at the same problem. So notice that the equation AX equals B has a solution if and only if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Because since these are all equivalent, this is a linear combination of the columns of A that we're setting equal to B. So if that has a solution, that means AX equals B has a solution. And uh, another way of stating that is that AX equals B has a solution if and only if B is in the span of the columns of A. Okay, so if B is a linear combination of the columns of A, that means B is in the span of the columns of A. Okay, we're going to um, move over to um, a maple session uh, at this point. Um, because it's uh, easier to show you some of this with some of the graphics that Maple uh, lets me use. And so um, also give you a little 
um, uh, little lesson in using maple as well. So um, I'm loading here uh, the uh, uh, student linear algebra package and the plots package. And then um, I'm uh, defining two vectors here, uh, a1 and a2. And then I'm, I'm creating with this command um, a matrix A uh, whose columns are the vectors A1 and A2. Um, so you see the, the output that you get from that. Um, I'm defining these vectors um, because I want to look at the plane that they lie on. And um, as I explain here, um, this plane is... Uh, uh, defined by this equation, um, x minus y equals zero. So notice that both of my uh, uh, vectors here have uh, x minus y equals zero, and z can be essentially whatever it wants to be. And so what that amounts to is a plane that, uh, if you think about the line y equals x in the plane, uh, so it's kind of defined by that line, and then just straight up and straight down from that line. So um, let's uh, kind of look at a picture. Here I'm defining uh, plots so that we can see what these look like. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like I've uh, changed this just... Uh, let me change this. This is supposed to be 2, 2, 2. Really doesn't matter. But just to be consistent, let me make that change. Okay, then, um, so here's what uh, those two vectors look like. And let me kind of rotate this to make it look like what I want. Basically, if you look, you can kind of see that uh, they lie on the same plane. Um, and that plane uh, is, um, if you look at it, this is looking down from the Z perspective, and so uh, that's, if you look down in the bottom of that box, that's the line Y equals X, so they both lie on that line. Um, it's easier if you look at the plane uh, also, and, and then you can see the vectors as well, so let's do that. Here you can see the plane, and you've got the two vectors that are lying on that plane. Okay, so you can see here's the x axis this way, y going this way, and z's up and down. And you can see there's the plane, and looking from it from up above, you can see that we're cutting across on the line y equals x, and both those vectors lie in that plane. So if we look at any other vector in that plane, uh, any other vector where the x and y components are the same, it should lie on that plane. Um, so I've defined a new variable, new vector, a 1, 1, 3, and uh, then I've plotted it on this same uh, set of axes. And so if you look, let's look at it like this. Well, there you can see um, the new one, 113, uh, I made it black, so you can see it here. And then looking at it from above again, you can see that those are all on the same set of axes, or same plane. So all those lie on the same plane. So that means that B here is in the span of the original two vectors that we started out with, or it's a linear combination of the two vectors we started out with. So if we solve the system AX equals B, it should be consistent. So that's what I'm doing right here. Um, I'm forming the matrix um, an augmented matrix here. So I've got my matrix A, and then I'm augmenting on uh, the new vector B here. And all in the same command, I'm reducing that matrix to uh, 
echelon form, a row echelon form. And uh, here's what we get. Okay, clearly this system has a solution because we have no um, rows where it's all zeros and then something not zero. You can see we got got a row of all zeros, but that's okay. And uh, in fact, we have a unique solution because there's no free variables. And uh, the solution says uh, that uh, x1 is 3 halves, x2 is negative 1. So if we take that linear combination, okay, 3 halves times the first column of a plus negative 1 times the second column of a, we should get b because that's the system we just solved. So if you look, indeed, this is uh, that linear combination here, and this is b. All right, now looking ahead, if we choose a vector um, whose first components are not equal, then it should not be on that plane. And if we solve the system with it on the right-hand side, we should get uh, no solution. So let's give that a try. So I create another vector, C, um, which uh, has the X and Y components are not equal. All right, and I plotted it. So here's that vector. Let me get a view on that. There you can see there. You know, there. That's a good view right there. You can see this new vector is um, the cyan colored one. And clearly it's not on the plane that the other three vectors lie on. Alright? It's coming off off the plane. So that means that it is not in the span of the other three. So it's not a linear combinant, I mean, of the other, well, the other three, but really we're only interested in the other two. Um, it's not a linear combination of the columns of A. So if we um, solve the system um, with C on the right-hand side, um, then here's what we end up with. Okay, so I didn't get it in reduced echelon form. I wanted to leave it like this. So this is just echelon form. But notice the third row. You got 0, 0, and then negative 2. So 0, 0, something not 0. So that tells us there's no solution. Okay, and then again, because that vector is not in the span, uh, it's not in the space that's generated by the columns of A. Um, and one more look. I just uh, created just a generic vector I call D. And then let's look at the uh, uh, echelon form of the augmented matrix uh, with A and D. All right, so it looks like this. This is a nice thing about Maple. It does the symbolic uh, computation, so you can... Um, do the computation with uh, variables or parameters instead of all just uh, constants. And so we can see, notice the bottom row, we got 0, 0, and then something else over here. And notice what that says. It says um, that if this system has a solution, then D2 minus D1 has to equal 0. Right? Because if this is non-zero over here, then we've got 0, 0, something not 0 in the augmented column, which means no solution. So for this system to have a solution, D2 minus D1 has to equal zero, which of course means that D2 and D1 are equal. And since those, back up here, those are the first two components, that's just saying that the X and Y components have to be equal for this system to have a solution. Or graphically, the first two components have to be equal for the vector to lie on the plane that is spanned by a1 and A2. Okay, I'm going to stop there and we'll pick up uh, the next slide in the next video.